So welcome to the first video of this final uh, Ask an Expert session. Um, I was going to answer the uh, top three liked questions in the Ask an Expert uh, section. And I've got it up here, I'm just making it a bit larger. Uh, JS uh, asked uh, the top question, what is the next, and he had a number of points here and I'll cover them briefly. What is the next step to pursue after this course for those who want to learn more? Well, I think it's important to note that there are the sort of three levels to, to getting to writing parallel programs doing supercomputing. One is knowing the basic um, concepts, which we've covered in some depth in this course. Um, at reason, I mean, quite a deep conceptual level, if not a technical level, we've covered those here. The next thing is you need to learn how to program. So, you know, there are a, a lot of programming courses out there for free. If you're new to programming, you might want to learn something like Python, which is very popular, easy to get to get to grips with. And you can run Python on supercomputers, although it's probably not the most uh, it's a good learning tool, but it's not the way that most people use supercomputers nowadays. I still maybe saw early on, people tend to use compiled languages like C, C++ and Fortran. But the next step would be to learn how to program. Uh, but finally, if you wanted to actually get on and learn how to use a super supercomputer, there's a couple of options. Um, this MOOC is part of Prace, and Prace runs a whole uh, suite of training uh, courses. You can see them here at the Prace training portal, and there's the URL. If you just search for Prace training portal, you'll find it. And these are run uh, all across Europe, uh, and you can attend these courses for free. Um, these are the courses all across Europe. You see there's loads and loads coming across across a number of six Prace training centers, and there's a number of uh, um, second, um, subsidiary training centers also. Be these, are, these are the Prace advanced training centers and there's a number of praise training centers, more regional centers being set up. So I would really say if you want to do more technical courses, th these are face-to-face -face courses, uh, go here. Also, Praise is developing a bunch of new MOOCs. Um, there may be three or four more MOOCs in the pipeline, which will be more technical. So keep an eye on the, um, the Praise um, institution page uh, on, 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 um, on FutureLearn. And finally, just to illustrate, these are the Prace courses, but at each one of these centers, all the supercomputer centers across Europe will probably have their own training training programs. If you look at the Archer training program, which is for our service, which I'm in charge of, this is the list, Archer AC UK training, this is the list of the upcoming courses, um, all of which are, are free, um, at least if you're for non-commercial attendees. So, I mean, there is a lot out there. I would say that the Prace training portal is a good starting point um, for face-to-face -face courses, that's a good, window for all the courses there are in terms of uh, more advanced um, technical MOOC courses I'd keep it um, I mean you can look through the MOOC offerings that are out there but definitely keep an eye on the Prace Institution page because there should be some more MOOCs coming out in the next year or so. The next question was how security handled well I just want to say very briefly I mean it's very important to realize that as I covered supercomputers run standard operating systems like Linux and so that comes with all the pros and cons of, of a, a very common open source operating system. The pros are there's a lot of people looking at them, a lot of people running them, so any security flaws and holes tend to be fixed very quickly. However, it's also because they're open source and lots of people looking at them, it's, it's perfectly possible and easy for people to find out security flaws. So they're really the issues of security uh, security breaches at a supercomputer center are really no different to any large data center or such like just monitoring what's going on, checking that people aren't doing strange things, monitoring activity, and regularly having a good firewall and regularly keeping all your services patched and updated. It's really standard procedure. Um, I guess that in some of the US sites uh, where big supercomputers are, which have also have a military um, uh, focus, which, is def which isn't the case for any of supercomputers, uh, academic supercomputers in the UK, but the US, they also have quite a large number of military facilities. They'll have much higher higher security levels, I presume. Uh, third question, are there any SLAs to customers for simulations and what's the return on investment for Archer? Well, we have a lot of service level agreements with um, on Archer. I can only speak about Archer here. Archer is funded by the uh, the UK Research Councils, mainly by EPSRC, the Engineering and Physical, Cer Physical Sciences Research Council. And we have a lot of service level agreements with them to do with things like you know, keeping the service up, um, and responding to queries, uh, delivering the training program and such like, which are all quite tight. But they're, they're more at a service level, um, you know, keeping the machine up for 90 whatever percent of the time and this kind of stuff, keeping the machine used and, and unavailable. In terms of particular simulations, we tend not to. I mean, uh, Archer runs like most academic supercomputers. It's been bought and then it's divvied up to people in chunks. And so people are given a chunk of time when they can use it 
Um, if wait, so if wait times got too long, we would try and address that. But that would be on a, on, a, on a, uh, the whole service as a whole, not really on a particular job. What does happen, as I think I mentioned, maybe the answer to one of the questions previously, if someone's job fails because of a system crash or a system um, fault, then we will refund their time and let them rerun. But we really look at the whole system as a whole. Uh, if we had a commercial, if we have commercial customers, they may pay extra and get. Um, bumped up the priority list or, or given special access or something like that. But um, um, but uh, really, um, you know, um, it's, it's really taken as a whole a whole service. The return on investment is very difficult to quantify. I mean, it's something the research councils definitely look at. Um, I think what I would say is that um, we've tried to quantify the return on investment for the, the human part, the, the, the people. So, you know, the idea is you fund three or four people to help on software development, help people make their codes go faster, uh, run more efficiently, and you can translate that into the money because if a code runs faster, then it, it saves so many thousand hours of computer time. So you can try and do that. I would really say that, you know, um, if you believe that, that, that and as I do, that it's worthwhile uh, providing supercomputers for people to do academic research on, uh, like, like Archer, I think that if you believe that, then actually having centralized services like Archer is is a very cost effective way. You have everything in the same place, the people, the services all together, rather than a large number of small systems all with their individual overheads. You have one larger system which people can access from anywhere, and that definitely amortizes a lot of the costs. Um, so that's really it's hard to quantify that. People do look at this, but there will be a higher level. The, the funding agencies, the research council, will look at this. We, we look at we've looked at it at a smaller level. But I, I do I do believe that it, 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 it it's worthwhile. That's my opinion. Um, where can I find the EPC squirrels? To, I'll try and follow that up. Um, I need to speak to my colleague who's in charge of that. But uh, I don't know if we have physical stickers, but I will follow that up and uh, attach it to an email I'll send around. So I said I, I just touched on the issues there, but I hope you found those answers are reasonably reasonably useful and interesting.